Good morning, August 11th, 2023. God is exposing our vendettas. Yeah. God is exposing our vendettas. If we want, if we really want to see it. Um, it's funny how the ego lies. It lies to us so that we don't come into the fullness of God's promise. The ego loves to lie. It loves to deceive. It loves to delude. And it loves to hold vendettas against others. And then lie to us that we're not holding those vendettas. <laughs> what is a vendetta? Um, it's, it's a blood feud. It's a... Um, I'm going to get you back for what you did to me. Originally, I believe the meaning has to do with someone who was murdered in a family, and that family who suffered the loss of a murdered family member has a vendetta against the other family. And uh, we see this play out in lots of uh, real life situations. Um, through many heritages, uh, no family line or ethnicity is exempt. And God is going deeper than that. We may not have family vendetta as literal for a literal murder, but somewhere that the ego was violated or traumatized or exposed or oh man I'm on a clip text it's going to keep coming in somewhere that the ego was humbled by another person we have a vendetta we have a vendetta we want to get back you know, most of us know that scripture where God is quoted as saying, vengeance, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, and recompense is from God. In other words, God will return back what is due for all that has been done unjustly to us because spiritual law reigns supreme, both in our lives and in the lives of those who have either hurt or violated or traumatized us. And if we truly have faith, faith is the evidence that we believe that spiritual law is real. Because we leave recompense and we leave justification and we leave um, justice to God. But when we are in Christ, we not only leave those things to God, we actually pray mercy into those situations for those who have hurt us. We pray for forgiveness. We pray for the healing of our heart, not through seeing that other person hurt or returned back what we think they're due, but we actually gain the heart of Christ, which goes to the cross and puts the ego on the cross and is thankful for that situation. <laughs> yeah, I know this is not the mind of, this is not gonna be the lower mind. This is gonna be the higher mind of Christ. Is thankful for that situation that it actually happened to us because 
of the higher spiritual purpose that was meant to happen through us. Can thank God for what happened to us unjustly. Can pray forgiveness. Can seek humility. And then can seek mercy into the spirit for that person. You know, our minds are all coming from a different perspective. And I have been, you know, I've shared about this when I was going through a time where I believe I was in a very dark mental place. I'll call it mental illness. And people just run scared away from that term, not realizing that we all have mental illness. Um, those who run the most are the most deluded. In other words, those who run the most from thinking that they don't have mental illness are the most deluded. But at a time where I was in a very dark mental space, um, I can see now looking back that my mind, the way I interpreted or perceived other persons was completely thwarted. It was completely twisted. It was completely wrong. It was not reality. And as much as, as others would try to speak into my mind, it, it doesn't matter. The filter that it went through was twisted, dark. And I have also had situations with other people where I have had interaction or relationship where we could have conversations, we could have situations and completely the conversation we had goes through their filter and I could see it comes out like a right angle, it does not go through straight. It comes out through a right angle of their mind that is completely not what happened, not what was said, not what occurred. And they truly believe, or maybe there's a delusion that they believe that it happened that way or was said that way because their mind is in a lower realm. Um, and, you know, at some point in life or time, we're all guilty of this on different levels. And so I think that we have to be open to realize that our minds, must be renewed we must be transformed by the renewing of our mind in the first situation i was talking about when we have been violated truly we have been hurt we have been traumatized we have been whether it was the ego or the heart was traumatized or hurt whatever it was god allowed it to happen to us why why and god wants to change our minds raise our minds into the mind of Christ in that situation that we may release the nature of Christ into that situation, that that nature may flow through us like a filter, that we may gain the heart and the mind of Christ for that situation, forgiveness, mercy, compassion, death to our own ego. And in these other situations where our minds are dark, and our perception is like a right angle. Something's coming in the truth and it goes right out the side like a right angle incorrectly. And we are seeing things um, in a twisted, uh, th what's the word I'm looking for? Um, like when you go into a house, a circus house with all those mirrors and you don't know where to find the walls and everything looks distorted. That's what it is, distorted. There's a distorted view. And no matter how much people try to speak to us about a thing, we just keep thinking we're right, but we're coming out of a distorted view. And I think we need to cry out in prayer for God to touch our minds and to do the healing in our soul in those areas where our minds are connected to distorted perceptions because we don't even know they're distorted. The only way, well, not the only way, but the first way that we're going to see that they're distorted is by other people that keep telling us, we keep going through this cycle where people keep telling us, you're seeing it wrong, you're seeing it wrong. 
that's not what happened. That's not what was said. Your perception is wrong. And we keep denying it. And we keep denying it. We keep denying it. And then there comes a time that we see the cycle of the circus, of the distorted circus, and the clowns, and the drama, and all of it. And we finally get so tired. And we finally collapse and say, I think my perception's wrong. I can't see correctly, but help me, God, to see. Heal me in this area that my mind may be able to perceive straight, correctly, the straight way, the straight and narrow way of truth. Because right now, everything coming in through my filter is coming out distorted, especially in relationships. And we can see this in the world system, how everything through the media goes through. And if we're not awakened to that, we're going to believe everything through this filter of distortion. That isn't true. Well, we, we, we're seeing that now on a personal level. And I can look back now to that time 20 years ago, where my distortions were so way out there. And I think, how did I think that way? How did I absorb information that way? Well, because I had a part of me that wasn't healed. A part of my soul was, it was connected to that pain that I was talking about on a recent video that was on my chest, that was so tangible that I felt like I was walking around with this heavy weight inside of my chest and I could feel the pain. It was literally tangible. And I almost couldn't breathe from the grief of it and the emptiness of it and the pain of it and the loneliness of it. And I would say that when I was speaking about a recent video that everything, if we scrape it down, it goes down to fear. The greatest fear is the fear of abandonment. And when there was a fear of abandonment, we will have such distorted, distorted perceptions. And the pride will rise up in those situations. The pride of the ego will be on the surface of things. When we have a fear of abandonment. Literally, it is a terrified little child inside of us, in parts of us, that is so afraid to be abandoned. Unloved, not accepted, rejected. Left alone not provided for, having lack, loneliness, isolation, all of that stuff that's in that dark space of the soul that has been wounded, traumatized. This fear of abandonment causes the misperception and the distortion in the mind. It's connected to it. What happens is the ego gets attached to that fear of abandonment and that brokenness and that trauma. And the ego becomes this hijacker, this um, sabotager of our lives and of our prosperity and of our ability to receive that healing and receive that love. And the, and the ego says, I'll take over and I'll take care of you and I'll protect you. And I'll kill everybody that tries to hurt you. And I'll, you know, wield the sword at them. And I'll take care of everything. And that's that outward sabotager, prideful, egotistical mask that gets put on over that inner child that has been wounded and can't see in darkness that little child's in darkness like get me out of here but yet the ego is like i can see i'll take care of it i'll lead you yeah i'll lead you right into sources of drama of lies of misperceptions of delusions of you know one life event after another that is destructive one relationship after another that is destructive this is what the ego does but it keeps telling us to keep the mask on keep the mask on because i'll make you look really good i'll make you look really put together i'll protect that inner child that 
ego hijacker has lied to the inner child and has told the inner child, I'll protect you, I'll take care of you. Don't worry. I'll make provision for you. And yet, yet it destroys everything in its path. And it thinks that nobody can see the mask that's on it. That's the thing, because it's so diluted. Even though others can see it clearly, clearly, it self-deludes to make us think that nobody can see. So it's in multiple layers of deception. And that is why authenticity, humility, and accountability are so powerful, the three that work together. Authenticity, humility, and accountability. If we have that three stranded cord, it can lift us out of the dungeons and the pits of darkness, but it's going to break the ego. It's going to crucify the ego, but it will lift us up to that cross. It will lift us up to that higher place. It will lift us up to that higher mind. And just getting back to vendetta is because the inner child that is broken and is wounded the ego has told the inner child, don't worry, I'll get back at everybody. The ego has vendettas that it is executing judgment on all the people that has hurt the inner child. The ego thinks it's going to execute judgment. But the Lord says, my spiritual law is perfect. And if you have faith in my law, you know you don't touch judgment. You don't touch judgment or justice. You take your hands off of it. Because judgment is not for you to take care of. My law already has taken care of it. Karma, law, spiritual law, universal law, whatever you want to call it. Faith, the stuff that's unseen in the spirit, it adds up in the quantum realm. And Everything will take care of itself if we believe, and we will take our own judgment off of it. That's when the spirit man comes in the front and says to the ego, you get on the cross. I will not seek judgment. I will not seek a vendetta against another child of God who's moving out of their own brokenness and their own ego and their own wounded child. I will not seek judgment and justice against them. I will leave that to God's spiritual law. But it takes a lot of authenticity and self-honesty and self-reflection and listening to others around us who keep telling us the same message that we kept ignoring. If two or three people have told us something, two or three people close to us have told us the same thing, chances are it's true. And our ego just doesn't want to receive it. And that's when we get into prayer. Prayer of surrender. Prayer of crying out for the truth. Prayer to be broken, to receive the truth in our inward man. Repentance. Confession. Confession of our sin one to another that we may be healed. There is magic in that verse. I think it's James 1.8, but I'm not sure. It's pro I'm probably wrong. But it says, confess ye your sin one to another that you may be healed. This is a spiritual law. People are like, how do I get healed? This is a magical spiritual law. You want to get healed? You want to get healed. Is there something you need to be healed of? Confess your sin one to another and you will be healed. Maybe not immediately, but you will walk through a process of healing. I promise you, I have seen it manifest in my life over and over again. Confess your wrongdoing, confess your sin, confess your transgression, confess your iniquity, point blank, without defense, with acceptance, and you will be healed.
if we want to be released of these vendettas. And this is the word, like I actually saw it in front of me and I began to just do an inventory with God. Okay. And I saw boom, 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 all the places that I still had a vendetta. But my ego was lying to me and saying, no, it was really this. And it was really this. And it was really this. But no, no, we're really going to get honest because that truth and that moment of humility where we admit I have a vendetta. My ego has a vendetta. That's where we can receive the power of humility from heaven. That's when the heaven's armies come behind us, when we can admit, honestly, if we want to partner with the power of heaven, if we want to get in the heavenly realms and start accessing heaven's power, we must have that type of honesty and authenticity, the power of truth that sets us free. We're not going to muster any of this energy or power from our own self, our own ego. That's another delusion. And that's only going to bring more self-destruction, more self-sabotage, and more self-delusion. Everything comes back to the same concept of humility, truth, authenticity, accountability. We talk about discipleship. Discipleship requires accountability and authenticity. Jesus is shown walking around with 12 men and they all talked about real stuff. They all confessed real stuff. Jesus had to show them real stuff in them, correct them. You know, I think of the discipleship of my life. How many people have been involved in discipling me along the way? How many relationships have been involved in discipling me? We will never be discipled on our own. Discipleship equals relationship. There is not one without the other. There will be discipleship. There will be a relationship if there is going to be discipleship. And it will be an accountable, authentic, humble relationship. Think of the times that Jesus had to rebuke Peter right in front of the other guys. Because the cost of what Peter was going to pay with his ego was too high, and Jesus knew it. It had to humble Peter openly, accountably, and authentically. And Peter had to receive that and walk through that humility openly, authentically, and accountably. We carry vendettas. Our ego has lied to us. And we all do it. Nobody's exempt. And the Holy Spirit so faithfully is exposing this truth. Revealing the process of what the ego has done and lied to our inner child and told us it was going to protect us. It was going to get back. It was going to execute judgment and justice on everybody that heard it. But the Lord is so faithful to reveal the truth and to reveal his spiritual law to us that we may put our faith back in the law of God, the higher mind of God, and seek that path of healing as we confess our sin one to another. God has shown me vendettas that I have carried. And now I have to take that path in repentance. I confess it here, openly through the airwaves. God's love is flooding in because his redemption is his love. He redeems us through love, and he loves us through redemption. When we are corrected by the Lord, we know it says this. A father loves us through correction, through discipleship through redemption. And this is his process of turning us around to see the truth.
because he loves us so much. I love the law of God. I love the process of God. None of us has arrived, nor will ever arrive. We'll go through the veil and we will see what we haven't been able to see. Till then, may we bow lower and lower as God raises us in the spirit. I'll see you in the spirit. I'll see you in the truth. I'll see you in the life, the life of God, the heart of God. <laughs>